Next one, Kusmal. Kusmal respirations is deep, rapid breathing that you see in diabetic ketoacidosis. So the kid's unresponsive right now. He's got this deep breathing that you see. All right, and let's talk about that. Uh, it's pretty crazy that there's so many of these videos of little kids with Kusmal respirations. Now, the reason why is parents don't know that their child is type 1 diabetic. Um, type 1 diabetes does affect people um, typically when at the younger ages. And a lot of these parents have no idea that their kid has type 1 diabetes. The kid starts acting a little bit different, um, maybe a little bit more sluggish than normal, and maybe tired, uh, doesn't want to go to school, they're crying all the time. And you're just like, man, this kid, I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel hot, doesn't look sick or nothing, just always tired, always exhausted. Until little Jimmy goes unresponsive and starts breathing really hard. Um, it, sometimes this does happen, especially parents that don't, don't take their kids to a pediat, uh, the pediatrician often. All right. If they don't take their kids to the hospital to get evaluated, then they're going to have no idea that their kids' blood sugars are extremely high. And blood sugars aren't going to go down. If your pancreas isn't actively working to uh, lower your blood glucose level, your blood glucose level is just going to keep increasing because you're just going to keep eating, right? Um, so understand that insulin is the only thing that's going to drop that blood sugar. And until this kid goes unresponsive and then the, kid, then the parents bring them to the hospital, they're going to realize that those sugar levels are extremely high. But that's exactly what's happening with Kuzma respirations is that they're breathing fast and hard and they're trying to get the ketones blown out. Okay. You blow out ketones, hence why it has that fruity smell to it um, and diabetic ketoacidosis. And you'll, you can smell that. Biots, we talked about that also known as ataxic. Uh, it's just completely irregular. Uh, also another thing that you're going to see in ICP. Abneustic respirations, prolonged gasping inhalation, followed by an extremely short, ineffective exhalation. All right, associated with a brainstem damage. Prolonged <gasps> brainstem damage. Agonal gasps. Last thing I'm going to talk about before our break agonal respirations is not normal respirations. Slow, shallow, irregular, occasional gasping of breaths. Occasional gasps of breaths. So you might see this patient do this. They're like, what the hell was that? And then they don't breathe for a little while and then they do it again. All right. Agonal gas may be seen when the heart has stopped but the brain continues to send signals to muscles of respiration. Basically what's happening is this patient with agonal respirations could be dead. Heart doesn't work. All right. The patient went into cardiac arrest. The brain is saying, dude, we need to live, breathe, breathe, breathe. So it's, trying to coach the body and just trying to save itself. Remember, your body's constantly trying to maintain homeostasis. When your body starts getting all of this freaking carbon dioxide buildup and acidosis, your brain is like, shit, dude, we need to get rid of it. So these agonal gas, you're going to see them. And yes, I have ran into cardiac arrests where I'm like, oh, dude, he's breathing. No, he's not breathing. Those are agonal respirations. Check a pulse, start chest compressions. The craziest thing is that people, they see that and they're like, oh, he's breathing. Just call 911. And they sit around and wait while this guy's agonally respirating. I've even seen people shot in the face um, and agonally respirating. Even though the person was shot in the face and they're dead, um, I still seen agonal respirations occurring.